Welcome back. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday. We're going to do another Throwback Thursday. I know that's cliche, but we do have a bunch of packs of 1993 tracks at our, I don't want to call it disposal because I'm not throwing them away, but we are able to open some vintage racing packs. And I don't like calling these vintage to me when I think vintage, I think 1960s and 70s. But at this point in my life, it's hard to believe that 1982 was 40 years ago. That that just does not compute with me. 1982 feels like it was about 15 or 10, 10 or 15 years ago. But nonetheless, we have uh, two packs here of 1993 Tracks Racing cards. Look for special instant win cards. But of course, even if we win, we lose because we won't be able to redeem them. You see, they uh, foreshadowed 2017 Donruss with this wrapper with the black printing on the silver foil. I'm going to do my best to read these cards. I have my contacts in right now. So as we know, when I have my glasses on or my contacts in, reading small print is difficult, and I left my cheater glasses at work. So we will do our best. I don't know why I'm moving this around like I'm going to have inserts. Tony Glover starts us off. He was... Uh, 1993, this would have been a heck of a season for Tony. Started off the year with Ernie Irvin as his driver. He was the crew chief for Morgan McClure. Of course, Ernie left following the fall Bristol night race. They had Jeff Purvis in the car for a few races. Jimmy Hensley, Joe Nemechek, and did they have somebody else? Uh, no, I think that's the only three or four drivers that they had in that car at the end of the year before settling on Sterling Marlin. Here's the Haynes 500, the spring Martinsville race in 1993. Let's see how many cars uh, we can recognize. we got Rusty Wallace, Jeffrey Bodine, Hut Strickland, Rick Mass, Ernie Irvin. We just talked about him. Rick Wilson, because that's going to be the 44 car, not the 43 of Richard Petty. There's Kyle Petty, Davey Allison, Bobby Labonte, Brett Bodine, the nose of Phil Parsons' Mannheim car, and Jeff Gordon. I believe Rusty won that race. He won 10 races in 1993, including the first Union 400 at North Wilkesboro. Larry Mack, listen to him today on uh, his Sirius XM show. Been listening to that a little bit more as I am have a lot of uh, things at my work that keep me busy, but I'm able to listen to my Sirius XM. Ken Schrader's Bush Series car, if you see the numbers flipped of his cup number. An almost identical font as well. Sears Point, 1993. That should have been Mark Martin, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, Mark Martin, Wally Dallenbach, because Dallenbach finished fifth in this race. No, he didn't finish fifth. Um, he finished fifth in the Watkins Glen race in 92 and second in 93, but I can't remember where he placed there. Summit meeting, you got Joe Nemechek. Ricky Craven and Todd Bodine, and I don't know if you heard the news, but uh, at Daytona for the Xfinity Series race, Joe Nemechek is going to be teammates with his son John Hunter for Sam Hunt Racing. Bobby Labonte, who was driving for Bill Davis Racing at this time. The original HMS Jimmy Johnson, he was uh, part of the business, uh, part of that group at The Rock. You got Rusty Wallace, uh, one of the Winston Cup Series uh, girls. I don't know what they called them. The race now, uh, Unical seventy six was the race stoppers. So one of the Miss Winstons, and then Captain Roger Pinsky with an I rock. I thought that was an I rock jacket. Uh, what's that say? Maybe Fast Fair Racing. I don't know. It's hard to read. Alan Sir Junior. His only Cup Series start was in nineteen ninety three in the Daytona five hundred. This paint scheme did not make the race as he crashed in the qualifying race. He came back in one of Ken Schrader's backup cars. We have Alan Kowicki early ride. This is Alan's 1986 Cup Series car that he won Rookie of the Year in. He used this one single car the entire season and had two engines. And he would just, every time he put an engine in, he never had a backup engine on the trailer. The other engine was at, I believe, prototype engines being refreshed for the next race. So, um, there was a story that he had one engine, but I believe he actually had two engines for that season. I could be wrong on that, because I've read conflicting reports. But it would be very, very difficult to have made the whole season on one race. Since he was sponsored by a steakhouse, they referred to the, the engine and the car, they nicknamed it Sirloin. I'm sure some of you folks might remember that if you was watching in 1986. 
how how crazy is it we started the uh, first pack with Tony Glover now we start this one with Morgan McClure racing with all the McClure brothers and Tim Morgan Ken Wilson I believe he was on uh, Sterling Marlin's team that year crew chief perhaps don't really recall that there's Larry Pearson in Mac Martin's Stanley Tools uh, Bush Series car there's Harry Gant on the outside of him looks like they're at Richmond Sears Point, we had that card in the previous pack. I don't remember seeing any first run cards. I'll go back and look at them after I uh, shut this video down. DK Ulrich, longtime driver, longtime car owner. 1993, he was a co owner for Ted Musgrave's team with Ray and Diane DeWitt. At the end of the season, they split off, and DK took the Jasper Engin Engines US Air sponsorship to the 77 car that he would solely own and later sell to Jasper Racing and. Pinsky. Junior Johnson, longtime car owner, longtime driver before that, Hall of Famer. Bobby Hillen, who was driving for Junie Don Levy in 1993. Him and uh, the team split ways three races at the beginning of the 1994 season. They did not record a single top 10 finish. Ricky Pearson, crew chief for his, uh, well, he was crew chief for his brother for a while, but here he was crew chief for uh, Robert Presley. Here is what the short print cards look like at the high end of the set. Todd Bodine, a very young Todd Bodine, looking a little bit scared. Um, maybe the Fiddle Faddles just got his uh, upper lip curled up a little bit. I don't know. Fiddle Faddle is similar to Crunch Munch, but as you see, the backs of the cards are identical to the regular cards. Just the front of them has the driver's name with this kind of this racing stripe and that silver foil. It is a short print. Ted Musgrave, runner-up for 1991 Winston Cup Series Rookie of the Year. Another Alan Kowicki card. Of course, Alan uh, perished in a plane crash April 1st, 1993, en route to Bristol Motor Speedway. Robert Yates, legendary car owner and engine builder. And our final card is... Um, just some of the stuff that they put in random packs, fast track experience. Be kind of cool to send that off. That is Andy Hillenberg. That car, I think, made a couple of Cup Series starts in 1991 or 92. Fast track, of course, was the driving experience at Charlotte Motor Speedway. I believe Hillenberg may still run that. I'm not sure. I just, I know the ARCA team, I believe the ARCA team name is Fast Track Racing or something to that effect because he does own about two, three, four cars in the Arca Menard series. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Just kind of a little bit of a blast from the past with some ran couple random 1993 tracks packs here. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We will see you again tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday.